And, and that one, by vet veterinarians like it because that's the one they use in the forelimb of animals for giving uh, IVs and stuff, because it's an easy one to get onto. Uh, but coming along with the main artery, okay, we have subclavian, axillary, brachial, oops, and, and the other arm, we have the radial and the ulnar. Okay? This region in here, in, in the front side of the elbow, is called the antecubital. And one of the main veins, this one coming across here, is the antecubital vein. And that's a really important one if you're going into any healthcare stuff, because that's where you stick a lot of needles. Okay? Is you do like to do blood drawing and stuff there in that antecubital vein. Is that the one that's called median cubital? I think it is. Okay. Median cubital. That's what they call it. That's what they call it in our book? Okay. Uh, these veins are ones that um, when drug users, you know, when they're injecting, they use these veins in here in this antecubital region. So just as an aside statement, when we're, we're, whenever we were at the coroner's office working on a homicide victim, one of the samples we would always take would be to cut this entire antecubital region out with all the veins intact in it and preserve it, and they would make slides out of it and use that looking for the scarring and obvious results of drug use, of IV drug abuse. And <coughs> that was, it was a standard thing that was done on every uh, autopsy. The one other thing that really shows on this one, and that people tend to have a bit of a problem with, is right in the center, right in here, you notice there's a, a complex of veins right in here. And that complex of veins, if you look at it carefully, it starts down here and comes up, just a typical vein does, starts here, comes up, starts here, comes in, comes from all the internal organs and gathers together in this big vein. If you look at it carefully, it branches back out. It's branching there, branching there, branching there, doing what veins don't normally do. This vein is bifurcating in the direction of flow because this is the hepatic portal vein taking blood from the internal organs into the liver. And so you can see how this shows it coming up. And we have all these branches. These, these are the portal veins going out into the liver. The liver's in here. And then it shows veins gathering together again right there. Those veins gathering together again right there are the hepatic veins going into the inferior vena cava to put that blood in with the main circulation. We look onto this chart, and we've got here a uh, deep dissection of the thoracic and abdominal cavity. Heart's been removed, so it shows quite nicely the aortic arch coming around and down. Okay, all the way down there. And this shows very nicely the branches. This artery is the what? Brachiocephalic here. Common carotid here. Subclavian. The second branch is the what? Common carotid, third branch is the what? Left subclavian. Left subclavian. Um, the next set of branches are kind of surprising, or, 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 or in the same area. See this tiny artery here and here? Tiny artery right on, okay, this is the trachea and there's the bronchi. So right on the bronchi is a bronchial artery taking oxygenated blood to the lungs to nourish those parts of the lungs that don't get oxygen from breathing. Okay? The lungs have to have an oxygenated blood supply also to nourish them, and that's what those little arteries there are. Okay? We come on down the aorta, and we get into the abdominal pelvic cavity, and there's a series of major branches. Here is the celiac trunk. Okay. And the celiac trunk has these vessels that go out to the spleen, the liver, stomach, and duodenum. We'll look at those in a model here shortly. Okay. All associated there, there's two arteries that come up and service the diaphragm. And so these are, are taking blood up to the diaphragm. Those are the phrenic arteries. And they'll be on that model also. Then we have... A superior mesenteric artery. This takes 
uh, blood primarily to the small intestines, a pair of renal arteries taking a large percentage of your blood to the kidneys, and we'll deal with those in more detail when we get to the um, uh, urinary system. We go down further, we have a pair of um, gonadal arteries, and these have got all kinds of names. They are the gonadal arteries because they go to the gonads. They can be the ovarian arteries because in females that the gonads are ovaries. They can be the uh, testicular arteries because in a the male they're going to the testicles. They can be the spermatic arteries because in a the male they're going to the sperm producing testicles. And so you will see various names for these gonadal arteries. So would you just say give me three different names for this artery? Well, okay. depends. Usually I just say identify these. In this structure here, they should be properly called what? In this individual. This is a guy. Okay. If you haven't noticed, this is a guy. Okay. Um, the, the way you can tell it's a guy is, is there's the vas deferens going down into the, the inguinal ring, and, and that's where the uh, gonadal arteries are, are going into that inguinal ring also, right there. The veins coming back, now here's a little glitch. Here, here's, a, here's a cute little difference in the veins. The veins coming back from the ovaries or from the testes, see? This one, very typical, very, very standard looking. It comes up, goes along, and enters the inferior vena cava. That's the right one. Look what the left one does. The left one comes up, and goes into the left renal vein. That's one of those cute little one-point gimmicks on the tracing the drop of blood. If you happen to be coming back from the left testicle or the left ovary in your drop of blood, you have to remember that it goes into the renal artery and then into the inferior vena cava. <laughs> uh huh. Renal artery or vein? Vein, renal vein. Thank you. I said renal vein, didn't I? Yes. No, it's on tape. I said renal vein. <laughs> Kim's laughing at me. She said I said renal artery. Okay. Uh, the question was asked earlier about the intercostals. This one shows nicely. See, here, see these little intercostal arteries? They're coming off the aorta, and they circulate around and feed these intercostal <clears throat> muscles. Intercostal veins coming back, they go into this separate azygous system, and the azygous system comes up, and right up here, it drains into the superior vena cava. Okay? And it's on both sides. It doesn't show on the other side. There's a hemiozygous, an accessory hemiozygous over here. And they come up and cross over. I think there's where the cross is. That comes into the ozygous so it can go into the uh, superior vena cava. Take a look at one of the arteries. And, and this is up here for just really one artery that people always are asking me, where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay. Here's the female reproductive system. Okay, so here's the uterus, fallopian tube, and then here's the ovary. So here's that ovarian artery coming down, which would be the gonadal that we talked about previously. And here's the ovarian coming down here. And shown a little strangely, but coming down back here, this is the internal iliac artery. Comes off the common iliac, internal iliac, and it branches here and comes around into the uterine. And here's the uterine artery alongside the uterus right there. So from the common iliac to the uterine artery, which anastomoses with the ovarian artery. Common Giving iliac you a to the internal iliac? Yeah, see this is internal iliac. And then here is the uterine. It anastomoses with the ovarian. And the ovarian is coming off of what? Off of the... Um, aorta up several inches higher, okay, and, and feeding down into that. A one to look at, if you can look at the baby on this side here just to show him something, uh, to realize something, look at that. What is this coiled up structure all wound around here? Umbilical. The umbilical cord. And we know something, that the two umbilical arteries are carrying what? to the baby. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. I said it back, backwards. The umbilical arteries are not carrying anything to the baby. The umbilical arteries are carrying blood from the baby to the placenta, right? 
And what kind of blood do the 